Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's God, let, let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. Indeed, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. John 1, verses 1-4 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, in the body of Christ, we are so happy for you to join us in this ark of God's Word. For faith comes by hearing God's Word. If anyone keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. And by this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2, verse 5. Last we talked about serving the Lord with joy. And you might ask this question, How can we be joyful and serve the Lord in this yet fallen world? We can start by choosing him, loving him, trusting him. You know, he owns everything. He's the creator of all things seen and unseen. And he alone makes all things good for those who love him and serve him. Be still, knowing he is God. This serves him the most. This message was the highest viewed on our channel. Why? Because it's true. Recall the story of Mary and Martha. Martha was running around doing things as if that served the Lord whereas Mary was at his feet, calm and at rest. Mary was still, knowing that he is God. Amen. Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to his message. But Martha was distracted by all the things, preparations to be made. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord replied, you are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion and will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, verses 39 through 42. The living God, the only God, never asked for human sacrifice. And that also means he never asked us to be running around like we have our heads cut off trying to do stuff. God provided the perfect sacrifice himself. His son, the Word, who was made incarnate, lived, died, was buried, and resurrected, Jesus Christ. We don't have to run around doing anything. Understand, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. John 6, 29. Be a Mary, not a Martha. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted above, among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, verse 10. Again, the living God, the only God, never asked for human sacrifice. He provided the perfect sacrifice himself, the Son, the Word, God who was made incarnate. The Word was at the beginning, was with God, and is God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus, acknowledging that God had come in the flesh, but would deny any of the Son's true nature, is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. 1 John 4, verse 3. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 13 through 22. For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles will be all lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. And in that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. 
And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Loving God, loving his Son, trusting in his word, being still, knowing that he is God, is serving God. Worshiping God is serving God. Declaring his word is serving God and using our God-given gifts to serve God. And now reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 5 through 11. There are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. There are different ways of working, but the same God works all things in all people. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in various tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, who apportions them to each one as he determines. Take time to listen to God. His voice is a still, small voice, and he will direct you and you will receive your gift. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28 if you don't feel worthy to receive your gift, call on the name of the Lord Jesus. God, who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. Every morning his mercies are new. Every morning. Jeremiah's hope. Because of the loving devotion of the Lord, we are not consumed, for his mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Lamentations 3, verses 22 through 24. It is important to know that the great difference between the God we worship and all the other gods of history and in current uh, practice is one great difference. Our God alone sacrificed himself for us. And that's a good God. Thank you for joining us for this line's table. We hope it's been a blessing to you, and as always, we invite you to join us again next time.